Hello and welcome to the Odds Checker betting show. This is a Kempton Boxing Day and 27th day, a Christmas preview. Uh, I'm your host, George Ellick, and Andy Holding is currently in Lapland, doing absolutely nothing to dispel the rumours that he is indeed Father Christmas. Uh, so I am joined by Ed Quigley and Danny Archer as we look ahead to the racing at Kempton. Uh, Danny, I-, I reckon you're the only person currently in Morocco who is poring over the Odds Checker app looking at, at Kempton cards. Well, yeah, exactly. They're all still celebrating uh, the runs to the semi-final. I think the team mm. got back yesterday or the day before. So they had a massive uh, procession, of course, through the streets of R- Rabat, I think, where they landed. So, yeah, it's an interesting time to be in Morocco. But uh, they're definitely not talking about Brave Man's Game versus Long Press over here. <laughs> Yet. 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 Yeah, Yet. Yet. Ed, you are looking very festive, um, you know, from from one man in Morocco to one man. It looks like you should be in, in Lapland, to be fair. Um, how's it going down uh, in Cheltenham Way? Yeah, all good, thanks. Snow's melted. Yeah, I cracked this trusty number out, um, I say once a year, but basically for the odds checker, a uh, Christmas special each year it seems to come out, seems to dust the cobwebs off. But yeah, whilst Andy's uh, he's betting on reindeer racing, um, so we've got our, our main man in Morocco, myself. We've been uh, perusing the cards. And it, I mean, it's almost too much to take in, isn't it, George? In, in truth, I mean, it's a ridiculous amount of action. Uh, you, you know, when you just get away from Kempton, obviously, Chepstow, uh, Leopardstown, Limerick. Uh, I mean, there's probably a, a whole host of quality racing that are, are forgotten outside of the the obvious, you know what I'm saying? And then we get on to the end of the uh, end of the year and we've got the, the Shallow Hurdle meeting and then chat on New Year's Day. So for the next week or so, as I said, mm. forget your... Uh, your Christmas and your, your kind of festive plans, it, it really is uh, it, it's, it's a sensational amount. I think it's 11, 11 race meetings on uh, on the 26th, um, bonkers stuff, 10 television sets needed, uh, sober up and away you go. But um, yeah, very much looking forward to it, George. I, um, I've got Christmas with my family uh, up in kind of um, Herefordshire way and uh, I suddenly like, oh, I must be racing at, at Ludlow on, on Boxing Day. It's basically the only race course in the country that isn't having any racing on, on, on Boxing Day, which is a bit of a shame. So uh, I'll be watching. I'll be watching from the sofa. Um, yeah. So this is a yeah. We're going to pre- be previewing Kempton, obviously, because of the amount of racing that has been called off over the last couple of weeks. There is um, even more top quality racing, both uh, in the UK and over in Ireland, uh, over the Christmas periods. Um, but for the sake of time uh, we are going to focus on Kempton but I will be asking the lads if they've got anything else um, and we will, we will be having a look at the Welsh Grand National as well and I'll be asking the guys if they've got anything over in Ireland for us to look at um, but in in terms of, of kind of race by race previews we're going to focus on the graded races at Kempton um, kicking off of course with the long walk um, which has, has been moved here um, for Boxing Day but we will uh, get on to that in a second before we do uh, just going to, as I always do on this show, apologies for those who watch every week and are tired of me saying so, but please do download the Odds Checker app. To be honest, if you watch this every week and you haven't downloaded it yet, then um, this message is clearly not very effective. But uh, do download the app now where you can find the best prices that we'll be talking through across plenty of bookmakers, uh, best place terms, bookie offers, free bets, and uh, some of the best tipsters in the game uh, with their tips straight to the app every morning of racing. We are assured by Andy that he would have done his uh, Christmas deliveries over uh, Christmas Day and be ready for Boxing Day with the app coming, with the bets coming straight to the app that morning as well. So, uh, yeah, he is the busiest man uh, at this time of year. But we will start with the long walk. And Champ is the 5-2 to two favourite ahead of Miranda at 3-1. to one. Paisley Park is 7-2. to two. Goshen is 5-1. to one. Botox has is 13-2. Uh, to two. And Not So Sleepy, 14-1. to one. Uh, Ed, so I'll come to you first for the long walk. Yeah, it, I mean, first of, first and foremost, it's great they've got the race rearranged, isn't it? Mm. Um, a lot of grumbles about some big pots being lost due to the weather. But look, this race is on. Uh, in a way, I'm not sure it really, the two protagonists, Champ and Paisley Park, if you like, I'm not sure it ideally suits either of them, especially the latter. Uh, Paisley Park, as we know, um, a bit like myself, especially George, getting, getting much slower uh, in advancing years. And what we saw from Paisley is, especially in recent times, he does have this tendency to get behind, come off the bridle, and then have to really hit the turbo. And he seems to be becoming even more reliant on that uh, as he's getting older. You wouldn't have thought Kempton would, would really be playing to his strengths here, would it? A, a track, as, as a general rule, with much more emphasis on speed rather than stamina. I mean, we saw it in Newbury. He needed all of that long galloping straight to almost ped back in champ in that thriller uh, last month. And so... I'd say that the configuration of the course and the dynamics have probably gone against Paisley Park. I mean, it was interesting. Uh, Nicky Henderson with Champ said, the last place we'd want to jump a fence would be Kempton. 
Uh, he thought it'd be too mm. tight for him. Now, whether he thinks it's going to be too tight for him over hurdles or not, um, it's got to be a little question mark there. And then you've got the total kind of conundrum that, um, I mean, Miranda, uh, she's the one being really well supported in recent days, uh, looks to be on the up, seemed to thrive uh, when winning that, that small field mayor's event last time out on soft ground, uh, went up to three miles for the first time. But nonetheless, if you look at it, weights and measures on official figures, she's got over a stone to find. So all in all, I'm finding this race um, totally confusing, uh, if truth be told. Goshen, I don't know what to make of. I mean, I've given up talking about him on this show. Um, <laughs> and, and, and Botox has, I suppose, has got proven stamina on soft ground and not so sleepy. Another bit of an enigma. All in all, uh, not a race I'm going to be having a bet in. I just think there are too many question marks. I mean, if you really force me, I would go with champ. No one's forcing you. As no a default forcing. selection, but... It's worth just touching upon, whilst I'm on you know, my usual Michael Fish 10 seconds, that um, they've had quite a bit of rain in the Sunbury area. I mean, it's, I think it's good to soft, soft in places on, on both courses at the time of recording. There is uh, there's quite a few showers. So there's a lot more rain on the way, shall we say. Uh, I don't think it's going to be getting much quicker. So um, there is a chance there could be more soft in the ground than anything else. For all that, Kempton is one of the fastest drying tracks in the country. So if it did get quite testing there, then obviously that would play into Paisley Park strengths, I think, because it would just slow them all up a little bit. And it would turn it into a battle of wills. So all in all, it's a convoluted way of saying a no bet, but look, it's just a, it's a race for purists, this, isn't it? It's great just to see these these two old boys going hammer and tongs again. Uh, I mean, that race at Newbury last month, one of the one of the races of the season, it probably still mm. will be when we look back in April. So, um, yeah, I don't know what Danny thinks, but um, one I'm going to uh, just go for another mince pie during, I think. Right, let's find out. Danny, um, no bet really for Ed, but have you got anything for us? I'd kind of echo a lot of Ed's thoughts, really. Obviously, it's not going to suit Paisley Park at all, the track. I mean, if you've never been to Kempton, I think Ed's put it very clear, but it's one of the flattest and tightest tracks you can get. So it's not going to suit the stamina-laden credentials of him. I did think the same about Champ as well. I think he's probably the pace angle, potentially along with not so sleepy. Goshen, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know why Goshen, three miles, if he's going to stay three miles, probably Kempton is the place he would. But mm. at the prices, I'd be more keen on Botox has uh, his stable companion. Thought he impressed uh, at Haydock last time out. Could be, even be one for the stairs hurdle down the line because he's got decent form at Cheltenham. So I think I'd have to have it between Botox has and Miranda. I think Miranda's probably uh, the fly in the ointment, really. Already proven at Kempton, gets to seven pounds. And we'll probably just get a stalking ride from Harry Cobden. So at the prices, probably Botox has, but I think it's probably between Botox has and Miranda. I, I wouldn't be taking skinny prices about Champ or Paisley Parker in, in that long walk. So yeah, Miranda is um where are we? Miranda, three to one best price. That's with 365. Bet Victor Coral, uh, Bet Fred, plenty of others as well. Botox has is 13 to two as it stands at the moment. Um so yeah, as a Miranda come in for a lot of support. Uh, over the last couple of uh, of days and, and seemingly the one who, as Danny says, has the kind of um, Kempton uh, you know, history as well. Interesting that Miranda is now 50 to 1 for the stays. Um, you know, Champ being a 16 to 1 shot, you think if Miranda goes and justifies that that kind of gamble of the last couple of days, that would probably be clipped in a fair bit. Um, so it could be a way to play it. But we'll move on to the Quarto Star Novice Chase now. Where well, McFabulous, um, this is a, a, a proper one where using odds checker is important because if you want to back McFabulous, you can get six to five uh, with Hills, Coral uh, and Labrooks, eight to 11 though with, with Paddy's and, uh, and Betfair Sportsbook. So if you're, if you're, if you know, if you're having a, a bet at those two firms without having a look, you'd be getting eight to 11, about a six to five shot. Um, but Bally Griffin Cottage is 11 to four, Gelino Bello, seven to two, Time Hill, six to one, uh, Galia de Lato is 10 to one and uh, Mortluck is 33 to one. Um, again, another small field, bit of a theme at the moment, Danny. Um, but uh, yeah, trappy little affair. Um, who do you think is a value at this stage? Yeah, given some of the uh, the races you've had in the past, this is a bit disappointing. There could just be the six. Um, mm. I thought it was quite tough to look past McFabulous, to be honest. I think it was his best performance to date over fences when he, he scored at Newbury. And he did slam them really on that occasion. Got into a nice river mad in France. Uh, Time Hill, of course, reopposes here. I'm not sure Time Hill is is the chaser they hoped he could be. I mean, his jumping's been seriously sketchy, both when he won at Exeter on his debut and then when second at Newbury. 
Bally Griffin Cottage will give him plenty to think about. Um, I think he's probably better, though, at a stiffer track. He ran well in the Albert Bartlett last year. But I just thought look fabulous. This track, he's got plenty of winning course form. It will play to his strengths, and he can get into a nice gallopad in front. So I wasn't looking much beyond look fabulous here. I thought he was tough to beat, George. Fabulous six to five, they're the favourite. Uh, look to justify favouritism, and Danny thinks he may well do so. Uh, Ed, um, if Fabulous goes odds on across the board, I, it's, I'd be playing the prices on this to be honest with you without any real conviction on it. But Bally Griffin Cottage was a phenomenal chase debut at Haydock. I mean, he mm. jumped like an old hand. I, I generally sat up and thought, wow, uh, the way he went round Haydock that day. Now, the, the scouted team have said on record that, okay, quote, this lad cannot have it soft enough. Um, so by that kind of uh, logic, you wouldn't have thought whizzing round Kempton generally would suit. But by the same token, as I said, if the rains do continue to arrive, I would say that probably swings it in his favour and plays it against McFabulous. You know, Paul Nichols has pulled out McFabulous in the past on soft ground, declared him non-runner a couple of times. Has always said he, he would like a decent surface. He's a, of course, he likes to glide around, for want of a better phrase, rather than tough it out. So I'm probably going to be playing this late, depending on what on what the weather's doing. But Bally Griffin Cottage, if you were kind of going 8 to 11, 7 to 2 on the day or something, I'd definitely be playing Bally Griffin Cottage. Uh, I think he's got the most potential, shall we say. And he's the one, if we came to Charlton or Aintree, I think we could be talking about as having a serious chance at a grade one. I think McFabulous is going to be the horse. He's going to have, they're going to have to plot him round very carefully, I think. I think flat tracks, by and large, decent ground and kind of look through that way. So I think Kempton's perfect for McFabulous. But if it came genuine soft ground, I'm not sure that would play to his strength. So it's going to be a late call for me on this. But um, Bally Griffin Cottage, uh, I think, is, is far from a back number. Gelino Bello, uh, I mean, wants the ground as fast as possible. It sounds like according to connection. So I'm not tardy convinced he will run. I think uh, he might pull Gelino Bello out, didn't he, once upon a time on, on, on some soft ground. Um, and then who else we've got? Yeah, Time Hill. Uh, as much as I love the horse, I thought he jumped a bit like a snooker table last time out. Um, he's, 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 a he's not that big, Time Hill. That's the, the striking thing. You actually see him in the paddock. It, you, know, you know, he's not that big. There's not much of him at all. And that doesn't always mean they can't jump. But I'm not sure he quite has the scope of some of the others. When you see a horse like Bally Griffin Cottage, who's a proper unit, uh, you just see out and out staying chaser. So I, I think it's between the top two. Um, but I'm going to play it late. If the rain really does get in the ground, I will be getting definitely be getting involved in Bally Griffin Cottage. Bally Griffin Cottage, 11 to 4 at the moment. But I think the advice from Ed there is to, to hold fire and wait and see what kind of price you're getting uh, on Boxing Day afternoon. Um, don't forget when you're having your, your leftovers. Uh, on to the Christmas hurdle um, and Constitution Hill here, making this into... Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I was going to say not a great betting heat, but maybe the guys are looking to take Constitution Hill, Constitution Hill on. But five on Constitution Hill um, to repeat the trick and be Epiton at six to one. Uh, I like to move it ten to one. So Royal, uh, So Royal fourteen to one. Napa Hill fourteen to one. Metier forty to one. Highway one at one o two fifty to one. One hundred to one. Bar those. You know, obviously we are recording this on Thursday, um, so you know we don't know confirmed fields. We don't know, um, you know, necessarily intended runners and the rest of it, Ed. Um, but what do you make of this at, at this stage? Yep, a bit of a, a non-event, isn't it? Hopefully, Constitution Hill can strut his stuff. Um, I mean, if you're looking for angles in here, I suppose you're looking for a, a potential forecast play. Epton, the obvious one, according to the betting. Not quite so sure. There's, it's got to be a question mark. Are, are the fires still burning quite as bright with her? You know, we've got limited mm. evidence, obviously, this season. But um, if I like to move, it does run in this and turn up. He'll be the forecast angle here. He, he's a young, progressive sort with Epiton. I can't imagine she's getting any better. Uh, and I, I think I like to move it probably has the potential to improve past her. I think also I like to move it about 10 to 1 poke. Um, if I was looking for the next best in, I'd probably go with him. But all honesty, I expect Constitution Hill to win this quite convincingly. And then, uh, according to Nicky Henson, will um, 95% head straight to the champion hurdle in, um, whatever, 11 weeks, four days' time, um, or there or thereabouts. So, uh, yeah, uh, cakewalk, and I like to move it to follow him home uh, 12 lakes behind. <laughs> so yeah we don't have a market yet for without constitution hill so i cannot give you a price for that but you know as it looks at the moment would certainly be second favorite you'd think behind epiton um if epiton does decide to uh try and chase home the, the stable mate on on the day uh danny um again you know it's difficult to really preview this from a betting angle but have you got anything to add to, to what ed said 
I think, that, as you said, George, you know, when we're recording this, I think this race will fall apart. I think you only probably have four or five in the end. Uh, Nappers Hill probably is a likely pace angle. So I think from that point of view, any one, one well-round win Canton. So I think this trip, this track will also suit. I thought he was the one who could maybe chase him home when Constitution Hill breezes past him and uh, on his way to a 12-length 12, 12 win, as, as, uh, as said by Ed. But I, yeah, it's not a betting heat. The only thing with Constitution Hill is we're only going to see him, what if he goes to maybe three or four times this year and okay the fighting fifth was impressive but he's not taking anything on here just want to see him take something on and that'll be disappointing if honeysuckle does go down the mayor's route because it will make his task even easier in a champion hurdle i'd just like to see him take on something you know towards the top he's, he's so good i just like a real clash with a proper a proper champion hurdle uh, competitor but it's it's could, easy could, money, could, could state man not be that State man could be. He's the interesting one, of course. So obviously he runs. He's taking on Charger, obviously uh, defending champ, four-time defending champ in the Madison hurdle. He could be, but I don't know whether he needs another year on his back. But yeah, he he's now looking the likely champion hurdle contender, I think, to take him on. But Constitution Hill, he's great to have. You know, you just got to enjoy him, despite the fact that he's uh, turning some of his races into a possession. Yeah, absolutely. And then no, no, no uh, question about um, enjoying Constitution Hill processions or not. It's breathtaking to watch every time he runs. Um, we'll get on now to the, the the big race on the card. The big race of the day is, of course, the King George. Uh, we've got Brave Man's game is the 15 to 8 favourite ahead of Long Press at 2 to 1. Hitman is 11 to 2. Uh, Envoy Allen 15 to 2. Royal Pagai 16 to 1. Former winner Frodon, eight to one, sorry, eighteen to one. Uh, El Dorado Allen, a uh, former favourite and probably still favourite of Ed's there, um, is twenty to one. Ahoy Senor, hoping to bounce back, uh, twenty to one. Midders Bank, fifty to one. Uh, Danny, we'll stick with you for the big one on the card. We we do have at the moment, uh, we have eight runners or nine runners. We have nine runners here, so hopefully um, we do get the the three places. But another pretty small field for a King George, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but it's uh, it's full of quality. I don't have kids, George, but um, I imagine this would be, you know, Brave Man's Game and Long Press. It would be like choosing your favourite child. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of both. Ed, of them. can you confirm? <laughs> yeah, I've had that, that that conversation before. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot over the last couple of days. Now with the rain and stuff, Long Press is going to be a likely runner. I mean, two weeks ago he probably wasn't, but now he's definitively going to head for this. This is probably Brave Man's Game's Gold Cup, though. I think he's properly primed for this event he might even bypass Cheltenham and go straight to Aintree so this you know he's proven at the track won the Cordo star very well last year everything is in his favor he was excellent after the wind up uh, in the Charlie Hall I mean yeah it was a breathtaking performance the manner in which he jumped so uh, as much as I like Long Press I, I I do think he's got more targets going on this this year I think the gold cup is his main aim listen he could, could definitively win this on the way to that he was very impressive on his return at Newcastle but I just think at the price as long as it doesn't get too soft I still would beat with Brave Man's game if conditions do start to deteriorate Long Press probably goes off favorite so I think it all depends on the ground but just because I think this is his main target of the year Nichols chasing I think a 13th win in the race I think he's tough to tough to get away from. Frodon got a terrible ride last year. I don't like to be critical on here, but I don't know what they were trying to do, trying to blitz off. I think if he bounces back, he's still an each way play if you wanted to get involved at that sort of price. I wanted a bigger price. I know the Irish are shrewd on Envoy Allen. Uh, he won well at Down Royal, probably should have even won by further. So he's interesting as with the ground as well. But I think it probably is between the top two and also Hitman. You you got to mention him, but. It's tough, George. I think at the moment I'm brave man's game, but if they did get a deluge of rain, then probably Long Press would then be favourite, and I'd be with him. So uh, I'm I'm in a quagmire at the minute. It's one for the it's one for the lounger over the next couple of days. <laughs> one for the lounger. We'll have to get your thoughts. Uh, maybe send us a nice video from the lounger when you've solved it. Um, but yeah, tentatively with brave man's game at the moment at 15 to 8. That's with uh, Bet UK and Sporting Index. Um, Ed. Yeah, well, also I had egg on my face from the uh, odds checker um, betting show. Well, I think I said uh, Long Press was the lay of the millennium yeah. at, at Newcastle. I um, <laughs> obviously, uh, got got the job done. So yeah, hold my hands up there. Oh, that was a phenomenal. I could see on. you because you know the, the drift out of, in the ten minutes before you know, out from like two point eight to three point four. That was you just yeah. laying, laying, just, laying, laying. This is fantastic. I thought yeah, jog round in fourth, half fit, blah blah blah. That was some comeback, especially on ground. You listen to connections on the morning. We even um and ahhing. Would it be a bit lively? But they kind of took the point view that, well, we've got to get this horse out at some stage. And fair play to the 5-1-6-4 in a handicap on good ground for long press. That was um, 
that was a mighty effort first time mm. out. I think it has to be said. And as Danny says, the you know the 20, 25 millimeters of rain they've had over the last couple of days uh, is, is starting to really bring him into the equation. And naturally, his his price has been tumbling as a consequence, uh, dovetailed with the fact that Venetia Williams has green lighted him for this. So yeah, it wouldn't shock me if he went off favourite. Um, beat a lot of what Danny says about Brave Man's game. Although interesting side point. Paul Nichols interviewed earlier in the week saying if he does win this, he will head straight to the Charlton Gold Cup, which I thought was uh, seems a little mm. bit of a backtrack considering you yeah. know there was a lot of chat. He wasn't necessarily a Cheltenham horse. We might look at Aintree and Ryanair's and things like this. And so interesting what's what's going on there. But um, I think you know, well, he um, stay a Gold Cup. I think he's right. if, he, if he went to Cheltenham, I think I don't know if he'd stay a Gold Cup. I, well, I think it's exactly. more of a Ryanair chase one if they because yeah. he's got so much speed as well, Ed. But I don't Exa- know. Exactly. I, I suppose this is what uh, like Paul Nichols says. He says we won't ever know until we try it, and at least we can then uh, if he falls in a hole at Cheltenham in three months' time and comes ninth, they can probably put a line through that race for the foreseeable. <laughs> I suppose is the is the angle they're thinking. But um, the uh, the where I'm going is is Hitman. I still think is the the massive value in this. He's the he's actually with all the. The Brave Man's game, long press, uh, sucking up a lot of the market. He's been a little bit weak recently, but uh, I, I, look, I, I'm again, I'm going against the market. Everyone keeps saying, well, the more the rain that arrives, the more that does him because of his stamina. But I, I think I said to you, uh, George, on the when we did our, our five to follow for our jump season preview, I think he would improve for a test of stamina on soft ground. That is the angle I've been shouting for mm. ages. And I'm actually quite chuffed. I mean, he stepped up to couple of yards shy of two mile six for the first time last time out on very deep ground at Haydock and he, he absolutely walks through it I don't see another two furlongs around Kempton being a problem I don't think it'd be stamina that does him at all if anything I think he would improve for it is there's a there's a touch of the Clanders oboes about this horse and uh, I do think he will uh Sam Twister Davis has got the nod got the ride and I, I think he's going to run a really big race here I think he'll be stalking off the pace and he'll be played late and I really don't think he's far away. I don't think he's just anywhere near as far away as the market is leading you to believe, personally. So I'm, I'm a big fan of the Hitman here. Um, I do like his, his claims. Of those at bigger prices, I'm not massively with Envoy Allen. Um, for all that, going up in trip may have unlocked a new chapter in his career. Didn't jump very well at all at Danbrook. I watched the replay of that race. I mean, he clips numerous obstacles. Kempton being the type of track that, it's, you know, if you make a mistake here, you're suddenly three or four lengths behind, you know, you're right on the back burner uh, at a track like Kempton if you keep making niggly errors. And uh, of those at bigger prices, yeah, Ahoy Senor, I love him. And there is a case he, he could be a lot shorter given, he, you know, he's beaten uh, a lot of the protagonists in here, including the top two in the market in his career. But again, I don't think Kempton may necessarily suit. Eldorado Allen, he'll run an honourable race in defeat. But um, yeah, I'm... <laughs> I, I, yeah, look, I think Long Press is, I'm coming around to Long Press of the big two, just on, on the way, I think the soft ground, I think that comeback run was remarkable. But I do think Hitman, everything I've said about him, I think he really will flourish going up to two and a half. I mean, I was looking back at the, the City Isle chase of a couple of years ago. I mean, that was, they nearly called the meeting off. It was almost unraceable ground. I mean, he departed, crashed out two out or whatever, but he, he hadn't even moved a muscle. Harry Cobden on him on, on to over two and a half on deep ground on that occasion. Uh, I think soft ground three miles will be absolutely tailor made for him personally. I think Sam will play him late. I wouldn't want to see him anywhere near the front until uh, approaching the last fence. And I think he'll be delivering his challenge. So I think it's still a fair case. He's an each way price to be honest with you. I, I'd be very disappointed if three end ahead of him, put it that way. So yeah, Hitman, um, my, my biggest fancy on um, Boxing Day or St. Stephen's Day for your Irish follower. <laughs> 11 to 2 with 365 and William Hill uh, there uh, and uh, Bet UK as well. I'm going to flip this on you, Ed, because you know you put up Eldorado Allen a few times. I think Eldorado Allen is a massive price at 20 to 1 here. Uh, a horse that you know will run his race. Um, I think the form line since he stepped up and tripped behind, I mean, albeit 11 lengths behind Protector Out, but even so, that is a, a, a pretty sparkling piece of form, especially if Andy is right with Protector Out being the, the value play for the Gold Cup at this uh, time and then obviously in the charlie hall just three and a half lengths behind the 15 to 8 favorite brave man's game so um yeah, if you're looking yep. for a rock solid each way but i think there are there are worse ways to go yeah i, I wouldn't disagree with in that sense the problem is it's, it's the win part of the bet would be my problem he just seems to find mm. a horse too good in whichever scenario you find it i'd be shocked if brave man's game long press and hitman envoy allen i think one of them is going to end ahead of him is, is mm. the kind of angle if you could there was a sneaky each way without market. Those are the kind of devious markets I probably go into. Again, I could see him running a, a really solid race. And it, it sounds like at the end of the day, they're, they're going to end up throwing him in the Charlton Gold Cup as well. And 
maybe he just wants a proper test of stamina these days. So, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I, I wouldn't be shocked if he finished third, beating four lengths again, running another really good race. I just, from personally, from a, a win perspective, to see off the whole field, he's got to kind of take his form up another, you know, seven or eight pounds where I don't mm. necessarily see where that improvement's going to come from. You know the game is gone when Longshot Ted is turning his nose up at a 20 to 1 place, don't you? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Happy Christmas. <yeah>. Happy. <laughs> uh, that is, you know, that's uh, Boxing Day uh, in terms of the grader races um, we've picked off there. Um, anything else on, on the day uh, at Kempton, guys, that, that you fancy? Um, uh, yeah, Danny, we'll start with you. Anything here? Or should we move on to, to Tuesday? Yes, no prices, um, but I'm very sweet on one in the finale, the 340. Grey Dawning for Dan Skelton. Uh, officially rated 1, 2, 3 now, but the form's taken a massive boost. Lally Gag, who was second uh, to Grey Dawning X to last time out, hosed up yesterday under a double penalty. So the form looks very strong. Uh, Nicky Henderson, this has been a charity race for Nicky Henderson the last two years, so do be careful with what he runs, because I think he's got four or five entered, so... Definitely one to watch, but I just was very impressed with Grey Dawning. Off one, two, three here. I thought it was very tough to get away from. And a boring one. You know I love these, George. Fontwell, first race of the day. Yes. Boxing day. Keep an eye on Gary Moore's Givega from the family of Quivega. Hosed up on debut uh, by 13 lengths at Lingfield. This looks like just a get it, get this horse out under a penalty, and then they'll target bigger and better things. So Givega probably one to add to your Akers in the first at Fontwell, but Grey Dawning at Kempton in the finale. Absolutely love it. Nothing better than standing um, probably in the Arkle Bar or outside at Cheltenham watching a winner come in at Bangor. That's my favourite thing in the whole world. So yeah, <laughs> going 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 off track is um, is is yeah definitely appealing to me. Uh, Ed, anything for you on 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 the card on on Saturday? Sorry, not on no, Saturday. Not on, on Boxing Day. No, not on the no. We'll come to it later on the show. We've got a couple of plays in Ireland, but we'll cover those later. Beautiful. Right. We'll move on to the two greater races on the card at Kempton on um, Tuesday, the 27th, starting with the Wayward Lad Novice Chase, where Boot Hill is the six to five favourite ahead of Lacte Constance at seven to four. Thunder Rock, three to one. Ocon Risk is six to one. Glory and Fortune, 15 to two. Solo, nine to one. 16 to one by those, Ed. Yeah, I'm uh, with the second favourite here strongly. I, I, I'm not totally in agreement with this market. I, I think Lacte Constance looks a real weapon. Uh, really excited about this horse. Obviously, whiz round here on his, on his novice chase. Uh, one by, what was it, 20, 20 odd lengths or something like that. Uh, I mean, it really was a, a fantastic performance last time out. And um, interesting always that the trainer quotes after the scout and saying, I think flat tracks, a bit of cut in the ground could be his game. They don't necessarily want to start thinking of Arkles and that type of thing. But uh, I think everything looks tailor made for him here. He's going to have enough giving the ground. We know he acts around here and. Um, He's kind of just, he's, I think his form doesn't look too bad at all. He just does everything so easily. Mm. Uh, he really does. He just really took defence as well last time out. Boot Hill, by default, I suppose, is is going to have to be the market leader. But again, I'll be keeping my eye on the prices, really, with this one and how it develops. I think you say six to five, uh, a lot of even money around for Boot Hill. And I yeah. kind of get it. Um, I, don't, I don't know how much more proven there is in the locker. You know, he was obviously slammed by John Bond, which is no disgrace at all. And he did stay with him to a point. But I want to boot here once a little bit of a trip, personally. I, I just thought he looked a bit outpaced when John Bond went through the gears. Sandown's a, a stiff track in comparison to Kempton. And, and, and I just thought he just looked a bit one paced. Uh, I wonder if Boot Hill two and a half on a stiffer track might be more his game in the long run. Whereas I think this will be, this is the right race for Lap de Constance personally. Uh, it sounds like he's, well, he's got the green light for connections and uh, I think everything's right for him. So I, I, I think, yeah, I think the skeleton runner will tipple the favourite here. I'm, I'll be with Lap de Constance. Lap de Constance seven to four, Danny. Yeah, I'm in complete agreement. I don't like to use the word a lot, but that chasing debut was pure filth, George. Mm. He absolutely <laughs> bolted up on that occasion. He beat two solid enough handicappers. Hudson de Grugy was all OK over hurdles. And the favourite probably did disappoint. But yeah, I don't think you can get away from that boot hill. I'm in agreement really with Ed. I think he needs a bit of a longer trip. And maybe the way the race panned out behind John Bond, it maybe flattered him slightly to finish those eight lengths behind. At a bigger price, all com risk probably... Hasn't delivered over fences as much as I'd hoped so far, but I wouldn't lose faith with him. He's he's unexposed to the six-year-old, and there's more improvement to come. But the same can definitely be said of Lac de Constance, so I thought very tough to get away from. 
Great stuff. Double selection for the lads. Lacta Constance, 7 to 4. Skybet, Paddy's, Betfair Sportsbook, and Boyle Sports. Uh, on to the Desert Orchid Chase, where Edward Stone is the 8 to 13 favourite. Uh, that's with William Hill, the short as 2 on um, with Bet365. Nube Negra, 11 to 4. Captain Guinness, 8 to 1. Uh, Funnenball Savola, 10 to 1. Curse Sublime, 12 to 1. Editor de Gite, 14 to 1. Dolos, 20 to 1. Mr. Fisher, 40 to 1. Um, Sizing Potsy, 50 to 1. 365 are a fifth of three which is fairly interesting i would say because i think if you can stumble upon a bigger price um selection each way here that that runs you're probably going to be looking at um three places in, in what could be a, a five run of five or six run a race um but daniel I'll, I'll do, all other firms currently a quarter a quarter of the two um where do you see uh, the value here I think value-wise, maybe editor Dejit. I think you can mark up his run when third last time. He made a couple of sketchy mistakes. He wasn't as prominent. I thought it was a bit of a bizarre ride. I think they'll ride him a bit more aggressively in this, and he might be able to lead like he usually does. Between the front two, Nube Negra, of course, has to go fresh. So he's had that 44 days off between that and his slur chase uh, hose-up job, and then the champion chase will be his main aim. But I think Edward Stone, based on the, ting- the Tingle Creek win, I think he's tough to get away from. I, I think he's a, a worthy favourite. He slammed Grenatine, Shishkin disappointed. But I think from the British point of view, if maybe there is a champion chaser who could give an Ergamin something to think about, maybe it is Edward Stone. He won the Wayward Lad last year. Kempton's not a problem to him. Uh, yeah, I thought he was tough to get away from. Editor Dejee at a price, but... I thought if you're looking, if you're doing those, people love those Christmas ackers, don't they? They throw in, you know, mm. Basal Vegas, the Edward Stones, all that. I think he was a, a banker for it. Nube Negra will give him something to think about, but based on the Tingle Creek win, I think Nube Negra has got plenty to find with Edward Stone. Banker, uh, according to Danny, do you agree, Ed? Not quite as um, convinced. No, I, I knew you wouldn't. Well, <laughs> I, I think he's, he's, he's the right favourite, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's a lot in Nube Negra's favour here. You go back a couple of years ago, I mean, he absolutely thumped Altior in this race. Uh, I think kind of gliding around Kempton is his kind of, he's, it's his happy hunting ground. I'm I, I'm interested in the, the point Danny references about the, the freshness angle. I'm surprised actually running here when you, in the sense that you listen to Dan Skelton off the Schlur chase, it almost sounded like they were going to go straight to the champion chase. Mm. Is that dependent on being fresh? When he, he did thump Altior, uh, back in 2020, I think it was his first start for seven or eight months. So, he, you know, he basically hadn't run that season. So uh, he does seem a bit of an enigma, that horse, in that he, he fails to kind of back up and replicate his form race to race. So having said that, I say two miles round Kempton, if he's ever going to do it uh, uh, non-fresh, if you like, then he, he he's going to at least give Everstone a lot to think about here. Soft ground, I don't know, maybe too much is made of soft ground with Nube Negra. I said it was, it was soft enough when he won here a couple of years ago. Uh, I'm trying to get excited about something at a price and find an angle, but I think I think Edward Stone will win. I don't think it will be a cakewalk, put it that way. I think Edward Stone beats Nube Negra uh, in, a, in a, an authoritative display in the end. There we go. Uh, authoritative uh, as Ed is, uh, but uh, nothing to get too excited about for him at age 13. But Danny thinks one for the Ackers to have there. Um, those are the two yeah, graded races on the cards. Um but plenty of other cracking racing, of course, at Kempton on the day. Uh, guys, um, Ed, we'll start with you. Uh, anything that you um, you fancy else? Uh, you know, we don't have price for other races, but anything else you like? Yeah, look at it. The rest, George. Um, I'm not entirely sure where he's going to run yet, but Spartan Army for the Alan King team. He's entered in the, the opening race uh, in the juvenile hurdle, and he's also entered in the finale at uh, the, the top juvenile hurdle at Chepstow as well. Uh, Spartan Army... Uh, interesting type. This absolutely dotted up on his hurdling debut for the Alan King team. Uh, it was a pretty impressive display, it has to be said. And uh, Manny King making no kind of, you know, bullish chest out kind of remarks. He thinks he could be a triumph hurdle type. He, you know, talking a lot about him, very confident, handled deep ground, um, you know, on his flat days as well uh, with Joseph O'Brien. He clearly handled better ground, but uh, really took to hurdles like a duck to water, I think it was fair to say last time out. So Spartan Army. Uh, will be running um, on the, the same day, I think it is, or is it the day later, in the finale juvenile hurdle at Chepstow, or we'll be running here. I think Alan King's saying they're yet to confirm where he goes, but uh, I wouldn't be shocked if he was a, a cut above the opposition, at least, if he runs in this Kempton race. Yeah, interesting. I'm trying to see if there's any jockey bookings to give us, uh, not at Kempton, uh, no. and, and neither at Chepstow as well, no. so to keep one to keep an eye on there. 
Um, on to the uh, Welsh national now. Um, Ed, we'll start with you because you requested we spoke about it. So I hope you've got something interesting to say. Uh, Quick Wave is the 92 favourite ahead of the big dog, uh, 7 to 1. The Galloping Bear, uh, 15 to 2. Ask Me Early, 9 to 1. Pat's Fancy, 12 to 1. 300 through 5, 14s. Same price, big breakaway, uh, 14 to 1. Sorry, 16 to 1 bar those. Ed? Yep, my um, my strongest fancy of the Christmas period, really. Ooh. So we're, um, again, racking your grey cells, uh, George, from our uh, our Jumpers to Follow show. But Pat's yeah. fancy has been my fancy for this since, um, I think, when they, they priced him up in August, I think I started getting involved. But um, he, I, I really think everything is tailor-made for this this individual. Uh, Rebecca Curtis trained. Uh, in layman's terms, the horse loves soft ground and he loves Chepstow. Uh, I just think he's going to run an absolute storm here. Uh, don't worry, be too put off by his, his comeback run over hurdles. Um, Rebecca Curtis went on record beforehand. She said, look, he's desperately going to need this. Um, we kind of only pulled him out of the field six weeks or so ago. He'll need the run. This is to tune him up. And then, uh, look, what, what more would a Welsh trainer want than to win the Welsh National? I think it's fair to say. But you look back at some of his form as well. It's really starting to stand up. Uh, admittedly, in a lot of receipt of weight, he finished runner-up to Brave Man's game at Newbury. You go back to his Chepstow run over the Christmas period last year. He absolutely thumped Imperial Alcazar. Uh, well, that horse is rated up in, in the 150s now, uh, whereas Pat Fancy is running this off 142. I think he's incredibly well handicapped. Great record at Chepstow. Great record on soft ground. Jumps, stays, gallops. Be tuned to the minute for it. Uh, I think 12 to 1 is, is a cracking each way price to. 12 to 1, best price of William Hill there for Pat's fancy in the Welsh National. Um, a big fancy there for Ed. We've got Ed's fancy. Uh, Danny, anything for you in, in the same race? Bad news for Ed. I'm in agreement with him. My two, Pat's fancy. Uh, I think I think he takes a long while to get fit as well. Quite a yeah. big individual. And uh, come back to this later, but he was obviously fifth to Statler, who I'm a big fan of mm. in the National Hunt Trace. And as Ed said, needed the run at Chepstow on the return. But yeah, I think he's a leading player. And the other one who's a Chepstow fanboy is Ask Me Early for Harry Fry. He's got three wins at the track, loves heavy ground. And obviously the form was very well franked from his run at Banger last time out when Le Milos won that and obviously consequently won the Coral Gold Cup. So I, I think they would be my two against the field. Ask me early, probably my, my chief fancy, but I'm also uh, keen on Pat's fancy. Just on the favourite, quick wave, obviously very impressive last time out. Bud has got to back up quickly. Hasn't seen a lot of racing over the last couple of years. And that would be my only concern. This comes quickly and can quick wave back that up, despite the fact that ground will probably be in the favour. The galloping bear is another one who will enjoy testing ground and so will the big dog, but the big dog's jumping can sometimes let him down and that would be my concern in this. So uh, yeah, ask me early and uh, another vote as well for Ed's pick. Ask me early, nine to one, best price with Hills and Pat's Fancy, the same firm, 12 to one. Um, yeah, it's a decent race to go over in Ireland as well. We don't have time to go through it all, but I've asked the guys if they've got any um, anything to pick out for us there. Danny, anything for you, the other side of the Irish seat? Controversial. Uh, I'm at Leopardstown on the 28th, so I'm hoping to cheer this boy home myself. Uh, Statler. Uh, I'm, I'm a big Statler fan. I'm taking on Aplutard. I know people are probably going to be shocked by that. If Aplutard is the same Aplutard who won the Gold Cup and won this two years two years ago, excuse me, he's going to be tough to beat. There are slight concerns. Obviously, picked up an illness, they think, or something happened to him on the way to Haydock travelling. He's back on home turf. Probably tough to beat. But I've, I've I've also put up Statler for the Gold Cup, 16 to 1, I think he is. I, I think Galloping Deschamps is obviously the name on everyone's lips after the John Durkin. But I think this boy's been overlooked a bit. Uh, he's only had three runs over fences. He hacked up in the National Hunt chase. So stamina won't be an issue when he goes back to Cheltenham, of course. But also, I don't think he's devoid of speed. He won over 2-5 on his first start over fences at Fairy House. He's a, he was a smart novice hurdler. I just think he's uh, a one who's going to be tough to beat here, Statler. Statler, 9-2, best price as it stands uh, with bet 3.65 for the Savills chase on Wednesday the 28th. Uh, Ed? Yeah, I'm. Um, well, I've got th- three, in our, three races in Ireland I've, I've been focusing on. Um, I'm looking for a bit of value uh, in the Christmas hurdle that the Stayers, see Florian Porter and Classical Dreamer, Sucking up a huge amount in the market. Sounds like they may clash again. But I think Zana here is the forgotten horse in the race at a double-figure price. Disappointed last time out. Uh, make no 
no excuses for that. But he has had the wind operation since, and I think he really will come into his own over staying trip. So Sunny here has won it a big price. But the, the two I'm really getting stuck into, I'm taking on two shorties, basically, um, George. I'm taking the view. I, I think the market's slightly overreacting on two horses, and one of those will be in the... Uh, on the, the 26th in the, the, the two mile one furlong novice chase where Phil Dore is even money. Hollow Games, there's 100 to 30 I was seeing about him. I, I think there's not much between these two and I think people are going a little bit overboard about Phil Dore. Hollow Games is fascinating. You listen to Gordon Elliott, he says, you know, horses can make a, a fool of you at the best of times and he was kind of admitted. He thinks he's had this trip wrong for this horse his whole career. Um, <laughs> you know, he'd be trying him over two, five, three miles. There's talk of him making up into like a national hunt chase horse this season. They dropped him back to two miles last time out over fences and he absolutely sluiced in. And Gordon Elliott came out after and said, I've just had him wrong. I've been training this horse all wrong. He's a two miler. Um, and I think he will give Phil Dorr more than enough to think about here. So I'm going to try and get Phil Dorr beaten by a stable companion, Hollow Games. It sounds like um, being very sporting of owners and Gordon Elliott. Those two are going to go and take each other on. So hollow games for me to turn over the short price there. And then over to Limerick on the same day, uh, an absolutely stunning race. Of course, the Fahim novices over two and a half uh, down at Limerick. Now, it sounds like Jerry Colom is going to run uh, for Gordon Elliott team. Two, an extended two miles, three furlongs for Jerry Colom. I just wonder, would he be a little bit tap for toe over that trip? In time, he's going to be a proper stayer. Whereas the second favourite in here, Kill Crook. Uh, I thought it was an exemplary chase debut uh, at Punchestown. He seems to be a horse who no one's really talking about. I mean, look, he, he was entitled to win well on his chase debut, but it was the way he jumped, I thought, was really encouraging. And I wonder if he'll just have a little bit too much toe for Jerry Colom. You know, this is Kill Crook, who was third in Supreme against Jerry Colom, who I think is going to be an out-and-out -out galloping stayer type in time. So even if the ground did get deep there, I would just worry about Kilcrook's kind of tactical speed having a bit too much for Jerry Colom. And again, when I looked at the prices, I think it was kind of eight to 11 Jerry Colom, five to two Kilcrook. Uh, I'd be going that angle there, really. So I'm taking two shorties on. I'm looking at the uh, the Kilcrook Hollow Games double uh, over in Ireland on the 26th. Yeah, we're going to have to rename you um, Shyster each way. Ted, because uh, I love the look of that. Hollow Games three to one, pretty much across the board, and uh, Kilcrit nine to four as well, taking on two short price favourites. Uh, let's hope that one comes in uh, for us. Uh, that is the end of our Christmas racing preview, focusing on Kempton. Thank you very much to both Danny and to Ed for sharing their thoughts, tips, and insight. Please do download the Odds Checker app for the best prices. Book your offers, free bets, place terms, and some of the best tipsters in the game straight to the app every single morning of racing. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this uh, from all three of us. And I'm sure Andy and Lapland as well have a very, very Merry Christmas um, and uh, hopefully uh, don't have too bad a hangover to enjoy the racing on Boxing Day and after that as well. Enjoy the racing. Uh, please do remember to gamble responsibly and Merry Christmas.